Hey everybody, Law here from Slapdash Studios and Facebook's D&D Memes. I had a fun idea for a video, and I thought I'd just go for it. A lot of people have unpainted miniatures that they either don't have time to work on, or maybe they're afraid that they might mess it up. Well, I'm by no means an expert on painting, but I do have some tips that might help you finish painting some of your larger miniatures in a much shorter time. I'm going to do one in under 20 minutes. Uh, that is, after it's been primed. And all my paints are pretty generic, acrylics, my paintbrushes are pretty cheap, none of this is specialty tools, even the primer I use is just a generic black spray paint. Uh, I picked a miniature I really wanted to paint, which is the zombie side Necromatic Dragon. I don't know how the game is, I never played it or anything, but I got this set because it had some awesome ghost miniatures, a bunch of rat swarms, a ballista, and this really cool undead dragon. And the first thing I'm going to do is prime it black with a matte finish black spray paint. And I'm just using Montana brand, if that matters at all to you. Now, because of the lighting, it looks a little extra shiny, but this is a fairly flat black paint. Uh, if you need to use some acrylic black to touch up any missed spots, uh, now is the time to do that. And again, drying isn't really part of the time that we're spending on this. Uh, it's really, once this is dry, we're going to kind of start the clock. Not that the time really matters that much. Uh, now, in my mind, I pictured a kind of ghostly dragon with thick aged bones sticking out of it. So I'm going to start with a few shades of blue and gray. I start with some of the lightest colors and I want to dry brush it. And when I say dry brush, I mean get almost all of the paint off of the brush. Even here I have to smear some more off, so I'm really using just the minimal amount. It might seem a little wasteful, but it really helps to bring out all the textures of the miniature. So if you have a really finely detailed miniature like this one, it's going to do all the work for you. This saves a ton of time. And I can really aggressively get in the cracks and fill in this ghostly blue over the black, letting a lot of the pockets of darkness spill out. So don't apply too much moisture to it, just apply a dry brush of blue. Uh, and really the textures just pop right off of there. Um, next I'm going to use some bone colors, some yellows and browns kind of mixed together to make an aged bone texture. And then I'm going to hit the spots that I did not cover with the blue, like the horns and the skull, and there's kind of some armored plates going down the vertebrae. And again, I am getting it very dry, so I'm just super lightly brushing this bone color on top of the black. And this is why I like to use a black base for most of mine, because all of the shadows that pop out give it a really completed feel. Not a lot of pressure, not a lot of moisture, just kind of letting the brush do the work for me. And you're putting it on in several layers, even with the blue I went from lighter to darker. It doesn't take too long, I'm not even really waiting for it to fully finish drying because they will lightly blend together. And just go from light to dark, one layer on top of another, very quickly. You're not having to focus too much on the borders because, again, you're following the texture of the paint. And the more layers you put down, the better it'll look. Get all the little details, I did the fingertips and the tips of the wings and the bone color, um, just so it kind of shows that it has a skeletal structure underneath. It's, you know, leathery wings. Uh, and then I took a little bit of a lighter blue, something more vibrant and bright, and dried off the brush very, very well. And this is just going to kind of highlight some of the musculature and finish filling in some of the gaps that I might have missed before on my first take with the light gray and the blue. Um, and it's really just kind of make the uh, etherealness of the gray dragon pop off. Just lightly brush it on top, give it a glow. Really hit all those joints. Things that bulge out, if they have that hint of light blue on them, they're going to look a lot better. Then I make a nice kind of light neon like ectoplasmic green and I get a much finer tip brush. Again, a very inexpensive one. None of my stuff super nice for some fine details. Uh, this dragon's got like some kind of boils and cysts and things on it and I thought making those a really bright green would look pretty cool. They really just kind of stand out. You can choose whatever kind of highlights you want for your miniature. Even like wolves or bugbears might have little hints of brown or gray mixed in. And I decided I wanted to do the uh, tongue the same color of green. Like it's just kind of old and rotted. And I also uh, dot the eyes. I have a little hair sticking out the tip of my paintbrush, which is driving me crazy. I did cut it off eventually, but I still got the work done. And just adding little tiny neon spots. Not spending a long time. At this point, we're at about 10 minutes. 
And then I add a little bit of a dried green, that same neon, into these like open wounds that show the musculature underneath. Not a ton of it, just enough to make it kind of pop out. And then I take a little more of that light blue and finish it over the top to kind of seal the gaps um, in case a little bit of green spilled out on the outside. And then I use it to finish, just kind of highlighting some of the darker spots, make them pop out, create a dividing line between the bone and the scale. And then I go through with a fine brush and highlight any little weakened parts for the bone texture, like the teeth, the nostrils, the corners of the skull, uh, the bones that kind of stick out the side of the face. And then I take a brown wash and just pretty heavily apply it on top of the bone. Um, since we're doing this step by step at this point, it's pretty much completely dry. And you can see if you create pools of it, you can just push it around with the brush. You really do want it to pool up in all those cracks. And then as it dries, it'll settle in and fade away quite a bit. Um, so having actual visible pools of this brown might look weird, but they will dry up. And I'm going all the way down the spine and getting in the little nooks and crannies of those horns where all that texture lives and letting the paint do the work for me. And you can see it still looks really wet as it's drying. Um, but it only takes about five minutes. So at this point, you're basically done and just waiting for it to finish drying. You can see some of the drying process as the video progresses. You can rush it with a hair dryer or a dry clean rag, but I say just let it sit for a while. It's by no means perfect, but for the most part, this is a visually finished miniature. Uh, you have the option to come back later and do more detail work or add more layers if you want. Uh, but as it is, it's very fieldable and could be ready for a coat of varnish and a display place on your shelf. I understand if you want to take more time with your miniatures, I like to when I can for sure, but if you want to get over like a hump of self-doubt or rush to finish something before a deadline, I hope this was helpful, and I think the final product kind of speaks for itself. I think it looks pretty neat. Check out Slapdash Studios for more D&D content like the League of Ultimate Questing, D20 Questions, or all of our YouTube Let's Plays. If there's more videos you guys want to see, please leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you.